Throughout our lives, our brains face a constant challenge, deciding which memories to keep and which to discard. Think about it. You probably remember what you had for breakfast today, but that memory will likely fade within months. Yet, if you win a lottery today, that memory would stay with you for the rest of your life. This remarkable ability to distinguish between everyday moments and life-changing events reveals one of brain's most intriguing features, a system for memory selection. But how exactly does the brain make these crucial decisions? And how does this selection take place? Recent research has unveiled an elegant solution, how a pattern of neural activity, called a sharp wave ripple, acts as your brain's internal bookmarking system. Today, we are exploring an innovative study published in Science earlier this year that shows how these events help tag important memories during the day and ensure they get properly stored while you sleep. If you're interested, stay tuned. To solve this puzzle of memory selection, we need to look deep inside the brain at a seahorse-shaped structure called the hippocampus. It plays a crucial role in episodic memory, our ability to remember personal experiences as sequences of events in temporal order, like remembering what happened this morning or on your first day at a new job. What makes the hippocampus particularly intriguing is how it switches between two distinct modes. During waking hours, it diligently records experiences, tracking where things happen and in what order. It builds what's called a cognitive map, a rich internal model of the environment and the events within it. However, during sleep, when sensory inputs quiet down, the hippocampus enters an offline mode, where it replays specific experiences from the day. This replay is accompanied by a distinctive pattern of brain activity, called a sharp wave ripple. Here is a way to think about it. Imagine a region of the hippocampus that spent the day building and updating its cognitive map. During sleep, at the onset of the replay event, a massive wave of synchronized input arrives from upstream hippocampal area, triggering a so-called sharp wave. This wave sweeps through the neural network like a tide and awakens countless previously quiet neurons. But the brain is prepared for this surge. It has safety mechanisms built into the circuit. Networks of inhibitory cells rapidly spring into action when activity rises too high, suppressing other neurons. This creates a rapid back and forth between excitation and inhibition that appears as a high-frequency ripple riding on top of the sharp wave. This choreography of neural activity serves a crucial purpose. It creates a powerful selection mechanism for memories. When the wave of excitation sweeps through the network, it primes many neurons to fire. Yet, they can't all fire at once. The inhibitory interneurons act as gatekeepers, limiting overall activity and creating narrow windows of opportunity, brief moments when only selected groups of neurons can be active. Such interaction between excitation and inhibition sets up a form of competition in the neural network. Throughout the day, our experiences have left their mark by strengthening certain connections between neurons, while leaving others unchanged or even weakening them. Some patterns of activity have become robust pathways, while others remain weak trails. When the wave of excitation arrives, these different patterns, each encoding a different memory, compete for expression. In this neural contest, the strongest patterns typically win, and remarkably, these winning patterns that get to be replayed tend to represent the day's most significant events. Apart from competition, such neural replays have another important feature. They occur at a high speed. Like watching your day's experiences on fast-forward at the neural level. What originally took seconds during behavior gets compressed into around 100 milliseconds during sleep. This temporal compression turns out to be absolutely crucial for memory storage. You see, during sleep, the neocortex, the outer layer of the brain, enters a special state, where it becomes receptive to signals from the hippocampus. The compressed timing of these replays ensures that neural activity arrives in precise temporal windows perfectly timed to strengthen connections between neurons in the neocortex. 
Through this process, patterns encoding important events get repeatedly reactivated, compressed, and transferred into the cortex for permanent storage, a process known as consolidation. This raises an intriguing puzzle. Throughout the day, countless experiences update the cognitive map, but only some of them need to be preserved for later consolidation. What does the hippocampus do with such patterns that somehow need to be preserved until sleep when the neocortex isn't yet ready to receive them? This is where today's paper makes a crucial discovery. Scientists had previously observed sharp wave ripples and associated replays during waking states, particularly during brief periods of rest or immobility. But these awake ripples were puzzling. Why would the brain replay memories when the neocortex isn't ready to store them? And also, the frequency with which such awake replays occur is much lower than in sleep, which is probably insufficient, as proper consolidation requires more repetitions. It turns out that these awake replays serve as memory bookmarks. When they occur right after important events, they tag specific experiences for priority consolidation during sleep. Let's dive deeper into the paper to explore how exactly it was discovered. But before we do that, I'd like to mention that the authors of the paper also built an awesome interactive website and a Colab notebook where you can play with the data and explore the plots on your own. All right, so to investigate the memory tagging mechanism, researchers needed a way to watch memories being formed, tagged, and consolidated in real time. They used an elegant experiment with a seemingly simple task that would engage episodic memory. Their setup involved mice running through a figure 8 maze with two identical arms, each containing a potential reward site. The challenge for the mice was to learn a specific strategy, alternate between the arms to receive rewards. If they found a reward on the left arm in one trial, the next reward would be on the right. By recording from hundreds of neurons in the hippocampus, as mice ran through the maze over multiple days, researchers could watch the learning process unfold. Each day, mice would run trials, sleep, and return the next day to try again, gradually getting better at the task. But this raised a new challenge. How do you make sense of the activity patterns from hundreds of neurons? When you are recording from 400 neurons simultaneously, each moment creates a complex symphony of neural firing that is impossible to interpret by eye. A popular approach in neuroscience to make sense of such complex neural patterns is to look at the population activity and describe the collective behavior of cells in the network. Think about it this way. At any given moment, each neuron's activity level can be represented by a number, how rapidly it is firing. If you had just three numbers, you could easily plot them in three-dimensional space, with each number representing a position along x, y, or z axis. But when instead of just three dimensions you have 400, it is impossible to visualize. Fortunately, neurons don't act independently. Their activity is constrained by their connections and the inputs they receive, meaning that the network can only generate certain patterns. It's like a complex dance where dancers' movements are coordinated. While each dancer could theoretically move anywhere, the choreography restricts them to specific patterns. In terms of population activity, this means that the brain's dynamics is confined to a specific region in this vast 400-dimensional space, called a manifold. But how can we describe this manifold in such a high-dimensional space? While 400 coordinates might seem overwhelming, the structured nature of neural activity works in our favor. The patterns we observe can actually be described with far fewer numbers than 400. Think of it like describing a curved line. While it exists in 3D space with x, y, and z coordinates, you really need just one number to specify where you are along the curve, since the coordinates are related to each other by the equation of the curve. This insight leads us to methods of dimensionality reduction, techniques for finding simpler ways to describe complex patterns. One particularly powerful method which is central to this paper is called the UMAP. Uniform Manifold Approximation and Projection While the mathematical details are beyond the scope of this video, the intuitive idea is quite simple. UMAP searches for patterns of brain activity that cluster together. 
First, it identifies which patterns of activity are similar to each other in the original 400-dimensional space, creating kind of a graph of neural activity relationships. Then, it finds a way to preserve this graph structure while bringing the data down to just three dimensions that we can visualize. It's like carefully unfolding a complex origami structure to reveal the flat paper underneath. UMAP unwraps our neural manifold from 400 dimensions to three, exposing the hidden structure in the brain's activity patterns. When applied to the hippocampal data, UMAP reveals something remarkable a looped structure that perfectly mirrors the layout of the figure 8 maze. When we color each point based on where the animal was physically located in the maze when that neural activity pattern occurred, we see an exact correspondence. What makes this particularly striking is that UMAP discovered the structure purely from neural activity, without any information about the animal's actual position. But the spatial location is just one dimension of this task. What about the animal's learning progress across trials? When we color the same points by trial number instead of position, we see another layer of structure emerge – changes that reflect the learning progression. This means that the brain's activity patterns are changing in a systematic way as the animal gets better and better at the task, creating a clear trajectory through this neural space. This gives us a powerful tool. We can now map any pattern of neural activity onto this maze manifold and determine whether it resembles actual task-related activity. If it does, we can even try to identify which trial and position in the maze it corresponds to. As you might guess, this becomes crucial for decoding what information gets replayed and consolidated during sharp-wave ripples. Let's start with awake replays that occur when the animal pauses to consume the reward. By projecting neural activity during these ripples onto the learned maze manifold, we can decode their content. It's important to note that our UMAP structure was established purely from neural patterns during active maze running. That's what shaped our manifold. So when we find ripple events that don't fall onto this manifold, it doesn't necessarily mean they are random noise. These off-manifold events simply contain patterns that look completely different from anything UMAP saw during running behavior. They might represent other memories, future planning, or different cognitive processes. We just can't decode their content because we lack the right reference frame. Many of the ripples, however, do nicely fall onto our maze manifold, and they reveal something fascinating. These events correspond to temporally compressed replays of the maze trajectory that just led to the reward. Because we can decode the trial number, we can confirm that these replays specifically match the current trial the animal had just completed. In other words, awake replays capture recent memories of successful paths to the reward. But what about the ripples during subsequent sleep? While we can't know the animal's true position or trial number during sleep, we can still decode ripple content by mapping it onto our maze manifold. Remarkably, the sleep ripples that fall onto the manifold show striking similarities to the awake ripples. They replay similar trials and maze locations. In contrast, ripples recorded during sleep before the learning contain completely different patterns. This reveals a crucial mechanism. Awake ripples serve to tag specific events for later consolidation. But why not consolidate memories immediately during these awake replays? The answer lies in how memory consolidation works. First, the cortex needs to be in a specific brain state to receive information from the hippocampus, a state that occurs only during sleep. Second, a handful of replays isn't enough patterns need to be repeated multiple times to be properly transferred to cortical circuits. During waking hours, the hippocampus can't dedicate itself to endless replay. It needs to keep tracking ongoing experiences and maintaining the cognitive map as the animal performs the task. So here is the elegant solution the brain has evolved. Awake ripples identify and temporarily store important events in hippocampal circuits like bookmarking key pages in a book. 
Then, during sleep, when conditions are right for consolidation, these bookmarked patterns get repeatedly reactivated and transferred to cortical networks for permanent storage. While the exact cellular mechanisms of this bookmarking are still under investigation, it is plausible that awake ripples trigger local synaptic plasticity within the hippocampus. These changes might alter the network's dynamics in a way that makes certain neural sequences more likely to reactivate during sleep ripples, like carving out preferred paths in the landscape of possible activity patterns. Such two-stage process ensures that important memories get selected during wakefulness and properly consolidated during sleep, when the hippocampus can fully dedicate itself to the task of memory transfer. These insights from hippocampal physiology highlight the crucial role of direct experience and practice in consolidating new information. This brings me to our today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is an innovative online platform that helps you excel in STEM topics. They offer engaging, interactive courses, allowing you to learn by doing. Instead of passively absorbing information, you get to develop intuitive understanding of complex topics and sharpen problem-solving skills in bite-sized lessons. If you're interested in computational analysis we discussed in this video, I particularly recommend Brilliant's course on Computer Science Foundations, which covers the essential concepts, such as array operations and graph algorithms that are at the heart of many methods we talked about today. Brilliant offers a large collection of courses in math, science, and related topics. Their curriculum is designed to support both beginners building core knowledge as well as experts looking to explore new frontiers. If you're ready to supercharge your learning, head to brilliant.org slash artemkursanov to get a 30-day free trial of everything Brilliant has to offer, plus a 20% discount on annual subscription. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and consider supporting me on Patreon, where you can vote for video topics and find extended versions of video scripts. Stay tuned for more neuroscience and machine learning topics coming up. Goodbye, and thank you for the interest in the brain.